Wait, stay woke. This is the dawning of the proper Bassin man. Join us on this thin raft as we sail past ghost cats and ride the llama. This is crazy. I can't even read this. Just do me? Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television Season 5. What do all great shows do when they've been around this long? That's right, the clip show. We've compiled some of our favorite set fighter moments and bundled them all up for your enjoyment. So put those power poles down and after a quick word from our sponsors, we give you our favorite set fighter moments. Yeah! The all-new XF Series by Crestliner. Simplistic perfection with performance features built on a platform for success. The amazingly affordable XF Series by Crestliner. A brand new way to reel in bass. For more information and to find your local dealer, visit Crestliner.com today. The Crestliner Real Deal Sales Event. The best time to buy is now at Crestliner.com. Save up to $3,000 today. This is Carl. He's been obsessed with fishing since he was a widow tadpole. People have always said he has a unique style, that he skips to the speed of his own cast, so to speak. So when he started his own tackle shop, he did it his way. With exciting new products every month and great deals on fishing essentials. But the best part, he started a club with amazing member benefits. Go say hi to Carl at shopcarls.com. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods, from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Hey guys, pass me the Funyuns. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to have a little bit of fun with our buddy. Welcome back to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television, the amazing Fighter Man. Woo! What's up, dudes? Yeah. Dude. What's up, What's up? Seth? Sounds like a good crowd in there tonight. They're, they love you. Big one. They, I, I mean, they absolutely, I mean, you should, everybody's got these signs they're holding up that say the amazing Fighter Man. Right now, nice. you got a you got a huge fan base here in Hammond, Indiana. Heck yeah! They're going. Are you in the basement again? <laughs> no, nah, I'm at my girlfriend's. Just chilling out at the girl's house, huh? Yeah, I got some pizza and a movie. Did Did you chase the ever elusive North American bluegill today? <laughs> no, I, I don't mess with those. I, I couldn't think of a more embarrassing way to die walking out <laughs> on a lake. Oh man! And falling through the ice, uh, so I'm telling you. Them. I mean, you know, pound for pound, though. Pound for pound. You've heard that uh, debate before. No, I don't believe it. Pound for pound, they swim in a I, circle faster than any other yes, fish. Yes, they, 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 when you flip them up in the air and they hit the water, they, they, they do this. No, when they're coming up the hole, you know, get wrapped around your transducer. <laughs> it's absolutely, they do taste good. That, that is true. They are butter biscuits. We're going to give them yeah. that. You only have to clean like 200 of them to have a meal. Yeah, so. it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> the ever-elusive North American Bluegill. Hey, man, you have been on tour, dude. This is like a whole new... I mean, you've been an Elite Series pro for, for what, this year, third year coming up? Yep, this will be my third, third year, yep. Third year coming up. But things, things are kind of taking a turn for the better for you, aren't they? I mean, this Yeah, is... after those last two events of the last season, it got... Uh, life's a lot easier now. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's a pretty cool deal, and but with that comes the, let's call it the demand, and the responsibility 
of being uh, a bass fishing superstar, doesn't it? Yeah, I get, they get to travel a bunch and stay busy, so no complaints there. Yeah, I mean, but it's a, it's a lot of work, isn't it, Seth? Yeah, it's a full-time job now. Yeah, I mean, it, it beats flipping burgers, doesn't it? No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. What's a typical day for Seth Fighter? I mean, let's, you know, it's the off-season now. So I know we're not working sports shows. You're just chilling in Minnesota. Like, what's a typical day? What do you do? Um, not a lot. Basically just working on tackle, getting everything ready for the year, going over all my rods, getting all the broken guides fixed, tying jigs, um, just making sure I got everything ready to go. Because when I leave my house February 1st, it's uh, it's like a nine-month marathon traveling the country, fishing them, you know, a bunch of different kinds of lakes. And just it's all prep work right now, just trying to get everything run smooth once I hit the road. Less to worry about when you go, right? Yep. So, for sure. do you creatively visualize the 2017 season? Do you do you have do you have notions in your head, Seth? I, I do. I, th- I think it's hard not to, but um, you know, I try to go to all of them with an open mind. But yeah, I'm already thinking about tournaments down the road. But I definitely put most of my focus on the the next tournament, whatever it might be. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of nailed it there. It's hard not to look at the big picture. But you find that most people that are successful, n- not only in bass fishing, but in life, they, they seem to focus on the moment, don't they? Yeah, I think you have to. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a lot of, I mean, the second half of the schedule is obviously I'm looking a lot more forward to than the beginning of it. But, it, you know, it's one day at a time, you know, you got to catch them every single day and you know, obviously, you know, we got St. Lawrence and St. Clair and Champlain, you know, real nice smallmouth fisheries at the end of the year. But, you know, if you get 100th place in every tournament before that, it doesn't really matter what you do in those, you know. Do you feel more comfortable with smallmouth than largemouth? I do. I, it just It's a confidence thing. I've spent more time fishing for them and, um, you know, other northern fisheries. I, you know, I'm not questioning myself near as much when I'm out there. I kind of feel like I, I know what I have to do and. Um, just a lot, a lot more familiar with uh, how everything sets up. I, I still struggle quite a bit down south and tidal rivers and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to get better at that, but it, it takes time. Well, you had a decent derby in Florida last year, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That was, that was the first check I've ever cashed in Florida. Usually that's crash and burn state for me. But uh, this year we're going to Okeechobee. I'm kind of excited about that. It's uh, you know, a lake you can go and flip on rather than like Toho and stuff where you got to dead stick a Sanko next to a pad for five minutes to get bit so <laughs> we, we, we got be a little more fun we got Clawson coming on next we're gonna talk to him about dead stick and a worm for sure <laughs> there's no di- i mean yeah i mean okeechobee you can bust out that uh eight foot diowa flip stick bro yeah put on an ounce and a half or whatever and just get to plunking you know some some eyes. Of, you know a lot of the turns i've fished in florida have been on toho and st john's and stuff like that and there really hasn't been like a true flipping bite on either one of those places so i, I i'm looking forward to okeechobee more than any place i've been in florida really yeah awesome awesome now i don't want to go to toho ever again <laughs> no offense to anybody that lives there but. sorry people in toho palaka lalika it's an, an <laughs> Toho a Chiga. something something like that hey um we enjoyed watching you on on zona show dude that was fun. Yeah, that's helped yeah, you. That's helped we're you. We're gonna do it again next year too. So N- nice. Hey, it might be a little crazier. Yeah, I mean, give us a little behind the scenes. I mean, there has to be some stuff that you just could not put on the air. Oh, for sure. I, I was uh, kind of on pins and needles when that episode came out because I did way more embarrassing stuff that didn't make it to television, and I'm kind of glad it didn't. So <laughs> I, I felt a little relief after the show aired and. I didn't make too much of a fool of myself. What What's the biggest thing that what What bugs you the most about about fishing television shows? Um. Hmm. Well, I guess I don't know. Watching my language, I, I curse like a sailor <laughs> most of the time I'm fishing. And I usually slip up or do something, or I don't know. It's just TV. You got to get it right yeah, on the I mean, first just- shot. You know what I mean? You can't. Re-reel on the well, I guess t- some TV shows they do re-reel them in, but you know that <laughs> Zona shows all that's all every fish you saw. I mean that's just that's how it happened. So uh, you know it's like and I don't like when they say like 
Look at the beautiful colors on this fish. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, is that just stupid? Not a or blemish what? on it. Not, yeah, there's a there's quite a few slogans in television that are kind of terrible, but <laughs> well. like like you got to dance with who brung you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> now is this about the average are size you for this that bass fishing movie? Yeah, don't you love that dude? It had little Jacob With Wheeler Billy in it. Cyrus throwing a spinnerbait or something. Yeah, Zona and <laughs> Sanders were the stars of it, and then and then it, and then it had Jacob Wheeler was the little kid. Did you know that that was Jacob Wheeler? I, d- I didn't know that. Yeah, no, when you I'll have to go watch it again. When you see Jake at uh, at Cherokee, be like. Hey man, I loved you in that bait shop movie, dude. <laughs> and then have him sign your breasts, you know, like yes. because he's a yes. star. For sure. What, what are your hair goals in life? Uh, I'm going big 2017. Yeah, dude. There, there's no tremors coming out. I'm not doing nothing. We're just gonna. It's gonna get big and it's gonna flow really nice. I, I, dude, I'm I'm with you 100. I just got this one. Not a lot of them, but I got this one right here cut. Yes. What did you do that for? It got stuck in my zipper. Oh, that'll <laughs> yeah. happen. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was tough. It, yeah, wait, wait till you, you know. One of the things about bass fishing with long hair is wait till you get the the hair caught in the reel on a hook set. That is awful. Just hand lining yeah. at that point, or dude, what? it's tr- it's true. <laughs> it happens to me. You know, like it's it, it's bad. It's bad. But you know what? You got to look good. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you could probably ice fish for bluegill with one of your hairs. I could. Yeah. The ever elusive North American bluegill. Yeah. Hashtag. You got like two pound test in there, don't you? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, it's, it's plenty strong. I pantene yeah. it. You know, I pantene on Wednesday nights. Nice. I got. You got, you got any tips for keeping the mane luscious? Yeah. Uh. De- definitely. Just um. Don't wash it as often as you might think. That's one. Oh, of the I'm big, good at that. Yeah. That's one of the tips I can give you. You know, I mean, uh, not saying don't shower, Seth, because you're not going to you're going to be like Aaron Martins and they're not going to come around you on tour, you know, <laughs> but you got. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, don't wash it as often. All right. Enough with the hair tips. Enough with the hair tips. <laughs> uh, so, no, come on. No, keep talking. No, I thought uh, you put baby oil and honey in your hair. Ba- uh, baby oil, honey and sugar water. Yes. Awesome. Yes, and I bathe with the, the grizzlies. Bees love you. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, I bathe with the grizzlies. Okay, let's talk some. Let's get some technique out of the way. There are people that watch this show for technique, but uh, the uh, swim jigging for smallmouth. Yeah. yeah. You, you like to throw that swim jig for the smallmouth, don't you? Uh, on river systems, I do. Um, you know, it's kind of just a bulky version of a swim bait for me. I'm fishing it with a, a you know, boot tail style swim bait on the back of it. But in that off color water, I like the, the bulkier uh, presence of the skirt on a swim jig, you know. And, and what do you like? How are you retrieving it? What are you doing? Like, do you burn that thing or are you? Uh, you can do it. You can catch them a bunch of different ways, just straight winding it or hopping it and letting it fall. But, um, you know, a lot of those uh, current seams you're fishing for smallies, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll hop it a lot. You know, anytime you come over anything, a wing dam or a sand drop or something, and just kind of let it swing on a semi-slack line on the backside of that stuff. And that little boot tail kicking, it'll, you get a lot of bites, just kind of, I guess they call it t- tight lining. Dude, I love fishing a swim jig for smallmouth. And I, I honestly had my first experience with it this year on Lake St. Clair. And... Wow, do they do they just crush it, dude? Oh yeah, it's a fun bite. Oh my gosh, have you ever caught a peacock bass before? I no, sorry, dude. You got to put it on your bucket list. Yeah, yeah, it looks fun, dude. It's amazing. I'll tell you what, you and I were gonna go down to Florida, and I know people. I know people in high places. You know, it's not it's not what you do, it's who you know. That's right. We're gonna go down there, and we are gonna crush some peacock bass. That sounds fun. Yeah, I, I think I think you will love it. You'll then you'll look at it like people are. I'm trying to tell people these peacock bass. You know, they that the smallmouth got nothing on them, but the peacocks are the deal, dude. Are they? Yeah. Well, I'll have to check it out. I, I, in, the, in fact, they should probably introduce them into the late uh, Lake Millie Lackey where you yeah. where you fish. Might get a little cold for him in the winter. <laughs> I don't know how they handle ice. Well, I'll just put him in a heated system, a part a part of the lake over there. Minus five, four, three, two, one. 
booster ignition, and liftoff. The TH Marine Hydrowave H2 KVD Edition is a surefire way to ignite a feeding frenzy. The Hydrowave utilizes a sound emitting technology that imitates bait fish and other feeding fish below the surface that preys on the competitive nature of bass and other game fish to get you more bites. The Hydrowave is another way that TH Marine has you covered from transom to trolling motor. Dude, I, I was reading your file. You know, we have secret files on you bass fish. Uh -oh. Yeah, from the dark net. Right. We, we get it from the dark net. <laughs> and uh, and I, I saw that you've won over, you've, you've been at this three years. This is your third year, okay? But right now you've you've won over 150000 bucks already. Do, do yeah, you know? and some of that's open money too. That's okay. I, I, I fished the opens for three years before I got to the Elite Series, so. But you know what I found surprising? You won that AO, AOY Derby last year, yeah. okay? Um. But you didn't win much money doing that, did you? No, I got paid exactly the same as if I wouldn't have weighed in a bass. <laughs> wow. I mean, what, what, they got to uh, change that. Now you did get some bonus. They, they did change it this year. Uh, the oh. winner gets the the weight winner gets twenty five thousand this year. That's the Seth Fighter rule. Yeah, it's nice. I guess. It's, yeah. But you did. I mean, you got bonus bucks. I mean, I don't know, dude. I mean, that's a that's a major derby. I understand the principle of the moment there for that tournament but like did you ever feel like damn i finally won one of these things and i walked away with with a, a measly 12 grand yeah yeah i knew that going into it though you know it wasn't like a big surprise it wasn't like i was sitting there waiting for my 100 grand check and they gave me one for 12 you know but um <laughs> yeah, like I said, wait a next minute year it'll be changed but the thing i didn't really like is they didn't even give you a trophy for the deal really what? Yeah, the trophy I got was uh, there's a guy there. He makes trophies. He went to the first day weigh-in, and he wanted to see the trophy, and they told him there wasn't one for the tournament. And he's like, well, that ain't right. So he spent, like, the next two days building me a trophy. He said he knew I was going to win, but he built that trophy for the winner. And uh, it, it, that thing's badass, man. It's, like, nice. all wood. It, it's a really nice trophy. But, yeah, that I mean, no – money i guess no more money or no trophy or anything for the whole deal i felt like it was a little i, don't know, I feel like there should have been a trophy or something well, that, that I, makes it even better and now you got a trophy that no one else is ever going to have yeah that's right it's one, one, of, it's one. one, it's one yeah. of a kind it, it's one of a yeah kind. but you know what they say you can't look a gift whore in the mouth you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no no I, my life's benefited greatly from that's, it you know i got a, what they picked say. a couple nice new sponsors for next year got a ton of exposure in the tv show and um yeah, it wasn't all bad. No, I mean, dude, it was a game changer, a game changer for you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, you fish the Opens, you, you fish the Elites for a couple years. Has there ever been a time where you were like, man, I don't know if I can do this? H have you ever doubted it? Yeah, pretty much the first year and three-quarter on the Elite <laughs> Series. Like Up what, until lacrosse. <laughs> what's going through your mind? I mean, like, that is such a tough decision to make because you committed yourself so much, and and obviously it's something you want so badly. But those, you know, you ever see Animal House where you got oh, the, yeah. the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, and they're saying, like, look at this, that's a boy. That's a boy. You know what I mean? The, yeah. it, it's like, what, what what do you do, man? How, what, how do you battle that? It, it's tough. I mean, the the... The money really wasn't there. I fished that whole first year on the Elite Series, and I essentially broke even. I made zero, you know, worked all year and made zero dollars. Um, and I was basically on that pace up until lacrosse of last year. And, you know, it, it was going to be kind of one of those crap or get off the pot situations. Um, I might not be fishing this year if, you know, lacrosse didn't unfold the way it did. So yeah, the, I, I'm happy it did, and I, you know, I want to do this for the rest of my life. But um, you know, you got to make make money too. This this week, this past weekend, we were at, in Kokomo, Indiana, together, and and when you did your seminar, I introduced you as a shooting star. And <laughs> I, 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 come on, I'm being I'm, come on. This is like a, a serious. Do we have serious music we can play right now? Like a like a donate money to the animal shelter foundation. Like a don't play like that song. Song. Like commercial. Right. The arms don't of an angel. That. The the arms of Seth Fighter. The our, our little bass angel. Yes. Oh, there it yeah, is. that's appropriate. Yes. There we go. You are a little bass angel. But but I mean, dude, you are a shooting star right now. 
Are, are, I mean, are you feeling the vibe, dude? Are you feeling I the am. vibe? I am. I got a new outlook on life. I mean, I'm. That was the problem why I struggled. I think so much the, the first year and three quarters. Just you know, I was real tight on money and I was fishing for 50th place and you know growing up and fishing all those team tournaments I did pretty good but you know that's because I went out and tried to win every single one of them and you know that's that's what I, that's how I'm gonna fish the rest of my career is just swing for the fences every tournament and you know not fish for 50th place you're gonna so dance with I, who brung you dude that's right yeah I, I mean and you know what man I sympathize with guys like you I mean the first the first year and a half on the on the elite series and and you know living out of your trucks eating eating uh, sunflower seeds and then you get these <laughs> jag bags on Facebook who are Facebook bass pros and they get boat deals and stuff like that you know yeah. how, how does that make you as a pro bass angler feel yeah i'm not a big fan of the the facebook pros but um i tell you to each their own you know the you know doing the tournament thing ain't for everybody um you know fishing Fishing's what you want to make of it, you know. I'm not going to dog on anybody that just wants to sit on a pond and catch big ones and put them up on Facebook. But, um, you know, I wish I wish the sponsors and stuff would kind of concentrate all their efforts on the, the guys that are doing this for a living rather than, you know, taking care of guys that are, you know, pretty part-time at best. Yeah, that's, I mean, well, they, right. they come in first place out of the five boat derbies, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they got well, that going for them. Well, you know what, you know what they always say. Yeah, you can only fish as good as you look. Yeah, yeah, and that you gotta, is. They you got to dance with who brung you. I just swallowed my gum with that one. <laughs> That'll do it. So yeah, Ryan, a- Ryan actually collaborated all day with Ronnie Moore on those stats, and they both came up <laughs> yeah. with those together. Yeah, that's a true right. story. I just made up right now, Seth. That's, 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 <laughs> that is absolutely that, true. That's the yes. deal right there. Hey, um, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, I saw a ghost of a cat one time. For real? <laughs> really? Swear to God. Swear to God. I got to know. America wants to know. The Bass Fishing Galaxy wants to know. Was this a cat you knew once? Yes. Oh, yeah. It was my cat. I was a kid in my parents' house. Um, my room was at the end of the hallway, and, like, my bed was in the corner. Where I'm laying in bed, I can see, like, all the way down the hallway. Yeah, I'm with you. And, like, the cat got hit by a car the day before dead and the next morning i like half woke up looked down the hallway the cat's sitting there like it always does in the same spot didn't think anything of it i was like half asleep and uh went back to bed and then i woke up and i was like that cat's dead like that was a cat ghost damn dude. A cat ghost cat ghost like, it wasn't even like blurry or like smoky like you see ghosts like it was plain as day like full force right there it, like a real cat ghost yeah, it was like stephen yeah. king shit right there Real, yeah. real it, cat it ghost. Like ghost. It wasn't like a yeah. It was like full three D solid form, you know. And I and I have to play the skeptic here. Are you sure you weren't dreaming this? Uh, I mean, it, it it was real to me. That's all that matters. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I dude, I totally believe it. It's crazy. Yeah. So this this is basically bass fishing, um, unknown facts and history yeah. right here. Uh, Seth Fighter has actually seen a cat ghost. I think we've asked that a few times, and this is the first time we've got a yeah, yes. No professional bass fisherman have, has ever had a paranormal experience except you. So Certainly far. not seen a cat And we've ghost. had just about everybody on this dumb show. And, and yes. yeah, I mean, strong, dude. So you very, got that going for you. Very strong. Which is nice. He, he won something. We're going to send you a prize, I think. Something Hell yeah. Going. Yeah. As a professional angler, I rely on my equipment to be successful on the water, and my eyewear is no exception. Oh, yep, yep, good one. Six pounder, seven pounder. From daylight till dark, every single day of my life, in the truck, on the water, my Amphibia eye gear provide 100% polarized protection. They're ANSI safety rated for impact, and best of all, they float. me it's a command to the fish quality jig heads with quality components with tried and true tackle like the big dude goby head the hunter or jacob head or all new tackle like the jackpot net head or buster swim bait head bite me it's a command to the fish get the letter out and visit bite tackle.com today
<laughs> I'm too excited. Dude. Fun with the whiteboard. I'm too everybody. excited, and do you know why I'm excited? Because he's coming back. Our dude, our buddy Seth Fighter, coming back to the show tonight. Yes. Yes. Seth Fighter. He's a dude. Yes. And the McRib is back. Yeah. <laughs> Even big for him. More. <laughs> yes. The McRib is back. Connoisseurs everywhere know that this is a, a triumphant, jubilant time in America right now. They should just stop taking it away. If our uh-huh. Japan listeners are uh, are in right now live or going to get us on the, uh, the iTunes, <clears throat> yes. please know that this is a big day in America right now. McRib day. It's amazing. Amazing things. Dude, but um, it's the off season, man. You're getting to spend some time with your girls, huh? Yeah. Uh, how, uh... Hang out with the wife and baby and do a little tiny bit of duck hunting. and Nice. You're ready for next year. How uh, how is it being a dad these days? It's a pretty cool time. I like Rose is getting yeah, Rose is getting awesome. bigger. I, I feel like this is pr- this might be one of the best times when it's all said and done because she can't crawl yet and um, doesn't talk. Well, she tries to talk, but obviously no words come out. Um, <laughs> Lama. I mean, I might be in the peak of a. Uh, you know, easy easiness of taking care of a child. Okay, there you go. Pretty soon she's gonna be running around and talking back to me. So there's a transition period, Seth, and I noticed it with my daughter, and it happens overnight. They turn in from a, 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 from lack of a better way to describe it, a sack of potatoes. Okay, that yeah. you're kind of just carrying around. Yeah, that's and, where I'm at right now. You know, sack of look at this cute sack of potatoes. She smells good. But man, then overnight the the the. The switch flips, and it's all personality. Okay. And my kid talks more than I do, if you can imagine that. It's crazy. I, I don't believe you, it's, but okay. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely crazy. But no, it's great. It's a magic time, man. I mean, it's yeah. a... Oh, that's fun. It's, a, it, it's something special. And it's and, and how cool is it uh, when, uh, when she's going to end up going into school and everything and saying, yeah, my, my dad, you know, Seth Fighter, I'm the Bassmaster Elite Series. You know that guy. You know that dude. I'd <laughs> be like, nah, I don't know who you're talking about, but no. sounds awesome. <laughs> We're in walleye country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know that no, guy that uh, no that facts. you know that guy that invented the fish location presentation system. <clears throat> I do. That's not Seth Fighter. That's not my dad. <laughs> That's what she's gonna yeah, say. Lander. That's what she's gonna say when she yeah. goes to school. <laughs> oh man, but uh, you know, you kind of uh, back to the realism part. Um. You don't sugarcoat things. You kind of tell it like it is. Uh, you, you can, do you know who Hank 3 is? Do not. Hank 3 is the son of Hank Williams Jr. And the, okay. and the grandson of uh, Hank Williams. Gotcha. And Hank 3 is, for lack of a better description, just a plain old badass. And oh, that's cool. He don't take no shit, man. Yeah. And, and he doesn't kiss ass. And, there you go. and to me, you're kind of like the Hank three of professional bass fishing. Whether, okay. Whether you want that or not, I'm giving it to you. Eh, I am what I am. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, the realist Seth Fighter, right there. Um, Seth, let's go into an alternate galaxy right now. You want to join me? All right. Okay. Yep. Um, this is a little left field for me. Okay. Right? For me, it's left field. For me, it's left field. So not be scared. Uh, not other bass fishing shows. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter another dimension of Stray Cats Outdoor Cartoon Television with Seth Fighter in his office. Seth, today we're going to talk about techniques, okay? Uh, Let's talk about techniques. One, yeah, I'm going left field. See, you didn't know I was going to talk. When do I ever talk about techniques? Are we talking slip sinkers? No, we're going to talk about, uh, no, this is serious. I'm being serious. This is serious Pat right now. I'm into it. Let's Serious talk about Pat. fishing. Yeah. You know, I know, he knows, they know, all you know that one of the most effective ways to put fish in the boat is swimming a jig, right? It's deadly. It's deadly. It is. It's a great way to put that trolling motor on, go down the bank, make a bunch of casts. It's a subtle, non invasive type bait, and fish seem to always hit it. You know, not always, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You can get a few bites on it. I want you to tell me 
Seth Frieder's approach to swim jig fishing. Where do you come from in the school of swim jig fishing? Well, I mean, swim jigging started not too far from my house. I know. Honest, which, uh, I know it did. Like lacrosse, Mississippi River is kind of where it all started. And uh, I've kind of, I started out with like the straight fluoro, um, lighter jig. Northern style. And fishing like boot tail or a curly tail grub and just slow, steady winding it. And um, I still do that quite a bit, depending on, usually more when it's colder. And then uh, I've also, I do a lot more like the newer style, the heavy, the, you know, the 3A sound swim jig, braid, straight braid or braid to a leader, um, cross style trailer and, you know, popping it Alabama shake and whatever you want to sure, call it. Sure. But uh, uh, I, I do that a lot more now. But I, I guess I fish down south a lot more now, too. Yeah, so that might have something to do with it. Exactly. And I, and I, um, I think that, so the deal is, why has it transitioned to that? So why, there, there is a definitive northern style and a definitive southern style of swim jig fishing. Yeah. So why do fish in the south like the southern style and fish in the north? You said you're fishing in the south more. Like, so what? You have to do that? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I didn't really catch it. I went a while without catching them on a swim jig, to be honest with you, a couple of years. I don't know if they kind of quit eating it or if I just because I wasn't fishing southern style or whatever. But the swim jig used to be like one of my best confidence baits. And it, I had a little lull with it for a couple of years where I just did not catch fish on a swim jig. And now the last couple of years, it's been, it's come, been coming on strong for me. So and the, and you it's been think, good. I don't think they ever quit biting it. I just, maybe it was the way I was fishing it down there or maybe I lost a little confidence in it. I don't know. So I, that's the turning point. I could say that went a couple of years without catching many fish on a swim jig too. JP yeah. and I talked about it for the last like two years. We didn't get nearly as many bites in a swim jig. Yeah, and we're fishing so, the same waters all the time. Maybe it was just the bass. Yeah, yeah. They they had a meeting. They had a big yeah. meeting. It's a new They're league. Back. It's a new league. They don't fit. They don't need swim jigs in that league. Apparently, yeah. I'm not mad at them. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I I mean I saw the same thing. So that aggressive style of swim jig fishing, um. It does provoke more strikes. And what you're just what's what's your setup for that? You set on the braid, and what are you throwing? Seven foot, medium heavy. Yeah, seven foot, medium heavy, thirty pound braid, uh, seven three to one, and uh, fifteen to twenty pound fluorocarbon leader. How do you attach that? Uh, with the FG knot. What does FG mean? Effing good. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. Get some Kevin Van Dam's line and lure. You can launch it a mile. Still going. Well, better stick to fishing. You know, so you like you can probably still catch. Well, I don't know about it anymore. They've probably been really beat on, but I bet you still catch. <laughs> right now. You, Canterbury, Corey, and Gussie all caught him there. Yep. Enough to, to propel all of you guys. Amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of fish, dude. Yeah. Uh, day three, there was three of us in there just, I mean, every cast and them all day long pretty much. Way laying on them. Yeah. Well, a couple little dry spells, but, I mean, it was. Oh, I watched it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so, hey, hey spe speaking, of, speaking of Gussie, he's got a question for oh, you, Seth. Oh, no. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. The great Canadian <laughs> actually, small efforts chirping to be me exact, already? We, yeah, we've, we've got three questions, actually. Oh, boy. Uh, question number one, did you get pregnant yet? No. No, negative on that. Yeah. All right, number two. No, Keep till, trying. Uh, Keep trying, though. Uh, third week in November, that's when she's like, I don't know. <laughs> that's when it's going down? Whatever, and, uh, There's a word for that. That way she'll be born, the kid will be born in the off season, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> like it was my off season plans. I just wasn't planning on doing it like right away because like hopefully the kid will be born like September, October, November. You know. Well, just stay sharp till November. Question number yeah. two: Bass and baby making with Gus How- and Seth. Question number two is: How do you think Chris Grow put a hole in his mattress at Ten Killer? <laughs> oh, oh, I mean. I think we all know how that hole got in. <laughs> Sleeping face down. You better keep that music playing, Andy. Friction. Friction. <laughs> he didn't pop a hole. He melted a hole. Wow. <laughs> Took wow. the wrong pill before bed. That a boy, Chris. <laughs> all right. Question number three. Where can everybody see the Johnson Brothers fishing rod slash oil fight? Oh, yeah. We, well, I'm, we're still working on that a little bit. We got a little show in, coming out called Derby Boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's a little, a little tuning up, but it's it's pretty close. And, yeah, there's a there's a pretty good classic Chris Corey uh, brother on brother stupid fight about nothing that um, <laughs> is really hilarious. Fishing rod slash oil fight. Oil it sounds, fight. Sounds it's like in Zoolander. Yeah, they the last jug of oil, but they had like a bunch oh. of them, but didn't realize it because they're dumb. <laughs> I thought That's they were I actually thought. throwing oil at each other. <laughs> yeah, like a gasoline fight in Zoolander. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was good. it was a really long fight, too. It was like a probably a seven, eight minute fight. Wow. <laughs> Did they watch movies about gladiators afterwards? Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know. I think we watched Cops after that. <laughs> There you go. Uh, it's even better. Get a little authority in your head. Yeah. He sure did. Yes. Dude, congratulations on, on St. Clair. Amazing, amazing victory. I mean, you put it together. You persevered the, the St. Clair monstrous weather and ended up with a victory. And you won the century mark from us at Straight Cast tonight. So, thanks. Perfect capper. Perfect capper right there. <laughs> Told us plain and simple, straight faced, yeah. that you your 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 ghost your cat appeared to you as a ghost. Yeah, 100%. I be, I, and I believe you, hundred percent. No 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 ifs ands or buts about it. Like, I don't make stuff up, man. It I, happened. I, 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 I got you. I, I am with you. I'm it with you may too. have been a hallucination, hallucination because I was like <laughs> half awake. But I doing saw the a ghost, and I was like. Eight or ten years old, so it wasn't like I was hung over. Yeah, there. exactly. Tom Billings, get off the floor. He's <laughs> the way laughing again. So, but so I want to ask you, man. You travel a lot. You go to cool places. You go to out of the way places, and I'm sure you hear stories um, of urban legends, right? I mean, Brian, you guys got urban legends in Jersey. What's the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil. Champ on Lake Champlain. Champ, Come on. Champ on Lake Champlain. Um, There's been Sam Squatch sightings in New Jersey, too. <laughs> Sam Squatch? Sam Squatch. Yeah. Sam's Club? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, what is that? Sam Squatch? I, I really... <laughs> oh, you, Bigfoot? Uh, oh, he, uh, I thought you said Sam Squatch. I did. Oh, I never heard it called Sam Squatch. I'm being serious. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I like it. It's like Sam, Sam Squatch. Sasquatch. Sam, Sam Squatch. Sam Squatch. Lance, everybody. Say hello. Welcome to Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Freelance. Anyway, have you had an experience with any type of urban legend? Um, no. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard a Sam Squatch one time. I couldn't get eyes on him. Yeah. Um. But other than that, no, I haven't seen any other ghosts other than the cat. Um, <laughs> cat ghost. No Freddy Kruegers, no nothing, man. <laughs> the so I mean, if you if you never you never seen that type of thing traveling. I mean, I know we've seen we Kumar seen one. You know that oh, yeah. Kumar seen 100%. a squash. Yeah, he wrote a book about it. He wrote a book yeah. about it. You, in fact, you. I got it in my boat. I think it might have been my lucky charm. This <laughs> year. Yes, that's awesome. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits called the Buzz Toad. Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait, and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. Uh, this bait here's got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky, so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out. It's pretty awesome. 
The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Brovarney Bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Brovarney swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BrovarneyBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Hold on a second. When I hear that music... Crazy stuff's about to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you, right now, stand up and shout, and give it up. It's Denny Brower with the top five reasons that Seth Fighter kicks ass. Ladies and gentlemen, Denny Brower. What's up, Denny? Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to your buddy, Seth Fighter. How you doing, Seth? Good. How's it going, Denny? Well, it's going good. It may not be going quite as good after I get done with these five reasons. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Danny. Number five, Seth has a thunderous eye-crossing hook set, like a proper Basson man should. Like me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I like Thanks, it. Thanks, Danny. You like that? <laughs> All right. Number four. Seth has the mustache of a true champion, like a proper Basson man should, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, Seth pulls off the mullet look way better than Jason Quinn ever did, like a true Basson man should. Well... Not really. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Number two, Seth is a huge Denny Brower fan, like a proper Basson man should be. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I figured you'd really like that one, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, drum roll. Number one. And the number one reason Seth Fighter kicks ass, he don't take no crap from no one. That's right. Like me. <laughs> nice. Oh, awesome. Danny Brower. Thank you, Danny. Wow. You are my hero. I like idolized you my whole life. I grew up watching you <laughs> fish bass masters and went and bought pro model jigs and flipped them down the bank just because of you. And the mustache, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah. That's great. You're kicking butt. You got a nice stroke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Have you guys ever talked before? No. Uh, uh, I, no, I get mad at my, like, no I not really. Not, it, just uh, a couple of texts and things like that. Uh, so this is kind of like a close encounter of the first kind, Danny. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, he keeps threatening to take me duck hunting, but it hasn't happened yet. Oh, you that's got one ever. <laughs> we'll, we'll go flip some jigs in the afternoon, too. That'll work. That'll work. We uh, can do a combo trip. I know you like Minnetonka. I do. I yeah. do. <laughs> that would be it's amazing. So good. That would be, Denny, oh. that's a show. You and Fighter, duck hunting in the morning, and then flipping jigs in the afternoon. That's a show. That'd be the deal. That, that, that is a deal. That's like a dream <laughs> right there. That would be fun. So what's Denny Brower doing? What are you, where are you at tonight? You at home or what? You chilling? Uh, yeah, I'm at, at home on the shores of Lake Amstead just to count the hours till I go back out fishing in the morning. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it's nice. Uh, some big old bass swim in this lake, but... Uh, they don't always cooperate, but it's a fun place to retire. <laughs> it sure sounds like it. What's it, What are they doing on Amistad right now? What are the bass doing? Well, you're starting to get a little bit of a frog bite coming on. The grass is starting to mat up a little bit, but uh, you got a little bit of everything working. But the deep bites there, you can catch them 20 to 30. Uh, I caught some actually 45 foot deep today on a jigging spoon, but uh it's, it's getting into that summertime pattern where there's some fish shallow in the grass, but yet where there's no grass, you're going to have them out there on the ledges, so you can kind of pick your poison. Nice. nice. I love it. Are you out there, like, how many days a week you go out there, Denny? I usually go about five days a week if I'm in, the, you know, in Texas, unless I'm on the road doing something, but uh, 
if they're really biting, I'll go every day. But usually, I let the uh, you know the people have the weekends, and I do the five days during the week when I don't see another boat. <laughs> That's a smart way to do it. That sounds like a retirement plan to me, Danny. <laughs> It's a great retirement <laughs> plan, absolutely. You know, fish five days, then hunt the other two. <laughs> Goodness. Denny, hey, um, I just want to tell you, thanks uh, thanks for calling in and messing with our buddy Seth Fighter here. Uh, you got a good man there. He, he's doing a great job. He's got a tremendous future in front of him. Thanks, Danny. You're more than welcome. Enjoy the night, guys. That, thank you so much. Hey, Denny, we'd love to have you on soon as a feature guest again. What do you think? Uh, not a problem. All Just right. give me a yell. That's Denny Brower right there. Thank you so much, Denny. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Wow. Wow. That was awesome. I'm, I'm already home or I'd just go home now. <laughs> I got like kind of nervous talking to him. Your face got redder. You're, you're like, oh, you don't, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. You're, where your eyes used to have like the <laughs> raccoon tan line they don't anymore it's yeah, disappeared they're, yeah they're the same color now filled in the red yeah i told you i was gonna freak you out tonight dude. you did <laughs> that's how yeah. you bass fish and talk show sir right there yeah <laughs>